Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Shreya. Today I have a brand new guest, and I'm sure you have seen her in many people's YouTube channels as well as Indian television. So let's welcome Jennifer Zeng. And uh, Jennifer, Namaskar, and welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, and viewers, you know that Jennifer runs a very successful and popular YouTube channel, Inconvenient Truths. And it's my honor and pleasure to have you on our channel, Jennifer. My apologies for the time not coming together, right? But finally, we are together and we are going to be having a scintillating discussion. There are several topics to discuss. And uh, let us start out by finding what has been happening in this uh, northeastern part of China, where they are saying that the emergency rooms are getting overflowing with children suffering from some form of influenza. That's all I have. Perhaps you can cast more light on it. What are the dangers? Is this something that's been there for six weeks, eight weeks? Just give us, take us back from the time these problems started. Because a few weeks or months ago, there was an open mine that had some radiation related stuff also, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So, so, so things are happening in this way. I don't know where things stand today. So you can kind of, kind of give us an update on what's happening. Over to you. Okay. I actually, I just did a 30 minutes a short video yesterday uh, showing people uh, what's what's been happening in China. I think it started in a city called Dalian in the northeast China, maybe several months ago. But at that time, because it's it's in Dalian, so I saw a report about that because, you know, the COVID had been, has been going on for so long and people get a little bit tired about this kind of thing. So for, for us, maybe at that time, it was not that, not, an, not a piece of news. So I didn't mention it but gradually uh sudden or you can say suddenly uh it spread to beijing and tianjin and uh, and jining and changchun some other cities and especially in tianjin and beijing things are uh, exploded in the past several days we saw like i i show videos of you know the children's hospital both in beijing and tianjin overcrowded and the people are saying there are tenfold of you, your visits, and in some emergency room, you have to wait over 24 hours to see a doctor. And in a hospital in Tianjin, uh, one day there were 13,000 children, you know, flock into that hospital. So this is, I think, overwhelming. And uh, today I, I share another piece of, uh, I tweeted or I posted on my ex or uh, formerly Twitter account saying that now they are having medical uh, personnel from other departments or uh, to try to support the pediatric you know, wards which have been overwhelmed and in some places they have reactivated those those medshift hospitals or in Chinese we call it Fangtang hospitals that were established during the COVID when there are you know hundreds and millions of patients and so they, they uh, put all those patients in those uh, makeshift hospitals. Now some of those have been reactivated, but uh, the, the, the parents or the patients who were sent there were asked by the authority, uh, don't mention the name of Fang Chang because it was a sensitive word. It will make people think about the COVID again. So they're asked to call these places like negative pressure hospitals or wards. So, so on the surface, we we can only see, you know, uh, tens or uh, tens of fold, tenfold of more children, uh, you know, flocking to the hospital, and they, the, the authorities gave us a very little explanation about what happened. Only one or two doctors. Uh, coming out saying, oh, this is a mixed infect infection of various uh, pathogens, uh, pathogens, including COVID, influenza, and they, they also call it uh, mycoplasma pneumonia. 
but from what people are talking about, these symptoms are quite severe. And in some cases, you know, children got repeated infection and repeated fever. And in some school, more than a, a half of the children were missing their classes because they were hospitalized or, or they were sick. So, so right now, this is what we can see. But um, what we don't know is what exactly is happening. Is it the COVID hit back again? Or is it that COVID never left? Or is, is there any something like new virus coming? And also, I saw a uh, a YouTuber who has a medical background, who was a doctor before saying like, from the, the symptoms, it doesn't look like the ordinary mucoplasma pneumonia, which only usually only attack uh, your throat and it don't attack your lungs. But now a lot of children, when you do CT, you can see uh, they, in Chinese, they call it white lung, which is in the uh, CT or X-ray image, you can see a lot, large area of the lungs turning white, which means uh, those those area have already had some, you know, turning bad, we can say. I don't, I can't remember all the medical stuff, but it seems this is a very serious new wave of something. Uh, so that's why I, I did a program. I think we should uh, actually this morning, I sent a, a tweet on my, on my ex, uh, on my Twitter account saying that uh, I know that WHO has already demanded uh, this, the Chinese authorities to offer detailed information about this wave of, you know, the epidemic in China. But my point is, uh, I don't think we can trust that the Chinese authorities or the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, uh, to offer us any truthful information because from uh, the past three years of COVID, they've been covering up the truth. They've, uh, they've, uh, I think, blocking uh, WHO experts and uh, the US, actually, I think, experts uh, asked to go into China to investigate in the, in the very beginning that but all those requests got uh, denied so I think the WHO should be more active and uh, send the international experts directly into China and to investigate what is really going on or whether this wave of infection uh, is uh, how serious it is how infectious it is and how will it affect other countries. That is the, I think, a, responsi a responsible attitude and behavior that WHO should take on. Only I don't know whether CCP will be co cooperating or not. Thank you, Jennifer. So one question that I have is how long do these symptoms last? Like the child gets uh, admitted in an emergency ward. How long does the child have to stay in the hospital before the child is discharged? And what are the after effects? I don't see any, you know, uh, you can say official report about or how average. Uh, my personal uh, view is it could, it, it depends on different children, may be, may be different, have different situation. But at least I saw one post from a doctor saying uh, somebody, I think it's a new view of his colleague who is also a doctor, uh, actually had, has already been hospitalized for 20 days, but he still hasn't been discharged. Also, uh, this, this doctor mentioned out of 12 doctors in his department, nine are having a fever now. A lot of medical staff also got uh, you know, infected. I don't know whether it's because they were exposed uh, to the children, to the sick children, or it's something else. Anyway, he said uh, nine out of 12 of them uh, have fever and five of them have a very high fever of over 39 uh, degrees Celsius. 
Uh, so, and he said his one of his colleagues te tested on himself. He found both COVID, uh, you know, infection and some other infection. So it seems like a combination of different, uh, you know, uh, pathogens. So it's that, that's what I, I see from, you know, in China, the problem is the government, the authorities uh, are always, the first reaction is always to cover cover up the truth, how to control uh, the, the information over the social media. So you can hardly get a very official or over truthful overview of, of anything. So now uh, we have to rely a lot on, you know, we can say, we can call them netizens or individuals or uh, citizen journalists, they post whatever they know from their uh, aspect or what they know from, from from their friends, from their families, or what they say in the hospital. So we can only rely on this, you know, individual information or posts, and then we try to connect them together uh, to get an idea. But the videos of the a children's hospital being overcrowded. They are very real, and everybody can see the situation is very, very serious. Yes, indeed. And let's hope that uh, some good news comes out. I think first they need to understand what the problem is. So where did it originate from? Are there any viral labs near the source of this uh, place, like Wuhan? Uh, we have no idea. I I think this uh, started from Dali and then they spread to Tianjin, to Beijing, to other cities. So. Uh, right now, I don't see any connection between uh, a, a lamp with this uh, this out outbreak or, or anything else. But uh, I forgot to mention there there were uh, circulations of, of rumors. When someone says it's because uh, one of the main medication that is used to treat this kind of disease, uh, you know. In China, everything could be fake. So that medication is fake. So it's not effective. Another uh, sort of piece of information is that they found a, a very effective medicine that was used to uh, treat COVID was actually suddenly uh, pulled off the shelf. They Initially, they could buy uh, online. And I think that all, they were all imported from India uh, because China uh, also, there was news saying that there was only one uh, pharmaceutical company in China, in entire China, that that produced this kind of medicine. But that one uh, med uh, company was shut down or closed in July 2019. That was before the COVID happened. They closed down that only company that made this kind of medi medication. So uh, I, I don't know why, but that's some another two piece of information. I don't know whether it's relevant to the outbreak or it's unrelevant. Thank you so much. And now let's move on to the next topic. And that is that mm -hmm. China's most latest state of the art naval warship. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we saw uh, the, the ship was on fire. Uh, yeah. Has the ship, what happened there? And is it something they were doing some exercises? This is not actually, actually out at sea in the sense it's not commissioned. It is still going through some tests. Is that something that is like a test problem or is it something more severe? Can you throw some light on it? Uh, actually, uh, we don't have much information about that one, uh, 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 apart from that we see videos uh, pass around on internet and everybody say big, big uh, black smoke coming from that ship. So everybody understand there must be something going wrong. So people are saying, oh, it's, it's a fire drill. So it's an exercise, it's nothing has gone wrong, but a lot of people are not convinced. And I think in China, they are passing this video around uh, uh, with a so-called patriotic or positive image. Like they are saying, oh, we have not mm, such an advanced you know, landing ship, and uh, we are doing this on purpose to 
to show Taiwan, to show India, to show Japan, to say, show uh, uh, U.S. what a, a wonderful landship we have, and we are doing exercises. So they are because in order to pass around this kind of uh, video in in Chinese social media, you have to uh, attach a positive and a patriotic patriotic message to it. Otherwise, it could be uh, censored. So the message that going with these, uh, you know, videos uh, are not, I think, uh, go very well or can explain very well. Uh, some even say, oh, we are giving a, a welcome, you know, firework for Xi Jinping's visit because Xi Jinping just came back from his visit to uh, the U.S. Uh, I don't think many people will believe in that. So for me, it looks very likely something has gone wrong because in just in, a, uh, in August, they have a, a huge, another huge incident where a nuclear submarine got a huge accident where all 55, you know, high level uh, Navy officer were all killed during that incident. And I think of international media, I was maybe one of the first among English speaking channel or whatever media you call it that reported about it. I, I think I put, reported about that at the beginning of, of September. Then one month later, uh, like the Times and uh, the another, uh, I think, uh, media outlet, quite mainstream one in the UK, they also reported about it, saying that their information comes from the intelligence community of the UK. So if that thing that thing happened, uh, we could be very well like number one is we all know a lot of Chinese uh, military technology. They actually stole it from the US. Maybe the, the stolen technology didn't work well or because there's you know we don't know maybe some really man or some human uh, mistakes or or some say or maybe there are two groups of soldiers fighting among them each other or they are doing some barbecue but they spill out their gas stove so whatever reason could be possible so I think it's it's also a big blow to the CCP making their everybody was laughing oh, if, because the CCP always want to boast how me how powerful their military is, but in reality maybe things can go wrong in with any other kind of reason. If a, sub, a nuclear submarine can encounter that huge uh, incident, leading all people on uh, in it got killed, so it, there not, nothing worse be too surprising if there there was a fire on a, another ship. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And uh, lastly, uh, Xi Jinping made a visit to United States after a long time. A lot of build up on that. And precious little was discussed and even less was agreed to. We'll not go into all that. But when Xi Jinping returned back to China, did he, you know, get anything from this visit? Were there any? Uh, because all I saw was even the CEO dinner that happened, $50,000 of a table or something of that nature. Um, nobody has committed to doing any new projects in the uh, the China in 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 uh, in China is what I heard. Um, so what exactly did Xi Jinping get from this? Because I'd also like you to touch upon the rioting that took place on the streets of San Francisco, where the Falun Gong supporters, the anti CCP supporters, were all roughed up manhandled, a couple of them are in the hospital, one critical I heard. Give us an update on that one also. Over to you. Okay, first question of what has the CCP got from this visit? I think very, very little. Uh, maybe 
because everybody believed that the economy in, in China is so, so bad now, and the Xi Jinping is, uh, is facing huge pressure from both within the party and from the general public or the, society, the situation of the society itself. That's why it had to soften his stance and come in uh, to the US. And everybody was laughing his big smiles or his big smiling face faces he put on when he was visiting the US. People say 1.4 billion, uh, 1 billion of Chinese people seldom see uh, such a big smile from his face when he was in China. So of course, I think he got, uh, he had a lot to ask from from the U.S. Uh, and I think the the U.S. Uh, sa uh, sanctions on its uh, technology and science, like uh, like the embargo of ships, uh, really uh, hit uh, China very very badly. So that's why it's it suddenly changed its uh, wolf worried uh, stance and try to play the role of big giant Chinese panda again, but. I, I believe what he got was very, very little, almost equal to nothing, because while he was still in, in the US, Biden called him a dictator again with no problem. Uh, so he, he may have a big hope, but uh, I think what he got is very little because uh, actually, uh, uh, right at the same time of his visit to San Francisco, there was, a, I think, a, a survey, a result of the survey released uh, where 80% of Americans now regard the CCP as an enemy instead of, a, of an ally. So that has reached a historic high point. So he doesn't understand, like, because... Uh, America, after all, it's still a democratic country. So if the majority, 80% of the public and also a lot of congressmen and both the Congress and the Senator has have a very negative view about, about the CCP, about China. So if you only have a little talk with the president, actually there, there's, a, uh, there's a lot of limitation what a president in the US can do. He also has has to you know listen to the public's opinion and listen to the Congress, or has any law needs to be passed to the Congress. So, I think he he gained very very little. And uh, uh, regarding your second question, yeah, I think I did a a, a video on Xi Jinping's visit to. Uh, to the U.S., I said there are at least four unprecedented events happening this time. The first one is how much more money he needed to hire a welcoming crowd to, to welcome him. And this time, the violence is also unprecedented. Uh, before, I think every time when the CCP leader visit, visit the US or some other countries, there are always welcoming crowds and always anti-CCP crowds, you know, both displaying their own banners to voice their own concerns, but there never has been such a violent physical fight like like what is happening this time. So like you said, uh, I think at least 40 uh, anti-CCP uh, protesters got physically abused, beaten up. And uh, as you said, one or two of them has to be hospitalized. And, uh, uh, and a, 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 a protester who got beaten up by, by uh, three or more uh, uh, CCP supporters near San Francisco airport. Uh, actually, when he went to the court to support uh, one of the anti-CCP protesters, he actually passed out in, in the court because his situation was too bad. So this kind of physical violence has never happened before. Uh, so this, uh, on the one uh, on the one hand, I think it's because uh, you can say the the people that is uh, is in the anti or in the pro CCP crowd is different, or the component we can say this from the 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 previous 
uh, people. Previously, they mainly hire uh, Chinese students in America or th those Chinese, you know, township association or those kind of Chinese, a lot of different kind of associations. Those people are either Chinese students who are studying here or who have been here for uh, uh, so many years. So uh, at, at least they know something about how to behave in a democratic country and how to respect other people's opinions. Even if you don't agree, you both have the same uh, amount of right to, to voice what you want to voice. But this time, you know, in recent years or months, because of this open border issue, a lot of uh, we 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 are very concerned. A lot of CCP soldiers, police officers, or retired soldiers are uh, also coming in inside China or inside the U.S. through the open border or they, this time because Xi Jinping's visit was so important, they do want, want very badly to suppress the opposing voice. That's, so that's why uh, you can see they are they they look like professional facts or they are they are very strong men they got some trainings that's that's why they can beat up uh, uh, the protesters so bad in and in one case they uh, they cooperate so well like when someone was beating up a protester another several guys they immediately unfold their banners their red ccp banners to come up, you know, to surround the, this this group of people who was beating up this man, so that nobody can shoot any photos and videos from outside. They block the views. That was exactly the same kind of training that Chinese policemen got when they were in China. We saw uh, those kind of training videos where uh, they they coordinated very well when the, some of the CCP or the police officers beaten up the protest other uh, policemen immediately, you know, uh, gave up their set up their banners to block the views from anybody uh, from anybody's outside that circle, so nobody can take photos or shoot videos. So those kind of CCP thugs on the street in San Francisco uh, act exactly like uh, like a very coordinated way, or exactly like the training the CCP's policemen. Are receiving, and we saw similar training uh, videos of the policemen. So that was very, I think, surprising and also telling us who those people really are. So I think this is very worrying. We saw report before, like CCP has opened, you know, overseas police stations in a lot of countries around this world, including in the New York City. It's inside uh, the building of a Chinese uh, organization, whatever. So, but it is it is actually a CCP's police station. So this time they are uh, doing CCP police on the street of San Francisco. So that is very, very worrying that the U they can be so rampant um, on the U.S. So, so people believe there are already a lot of so-called fifths, uh, you know, column uh, force already hiding in the U.S. when the CCP needs them to do something, they can be activated at any time and uh, work for the CCP. So that is very, very worrying. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And uh, this has been a wonderful discussion. And I'm sure we're going to be having another discussion very soon as this, uh, uh, this crisis in the hospitals uh, starts getting more clarity. We'll probably come back and invite you in, in a couple of weeks' time. Or if you think there's something urgent, feel free to ping me and we will get together and share this information with all our viewers. Viewers, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And also subscribe to Jennifer Zhang's channel, Inconvenient Truth. She also has a Twitter handle by the same name. I'm still getting used to this X handle. It doesn't, you know, I, I want to X it. No, no, no. I want to tweet it. So it, it's, it's still settling in. So, yeah. um, so please do follow her there and subscribe to her channel. And once again, please don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar. Thank you.